In the summer of 2014, I was looking for a specific buck that my wife and I had coined OMAG. I could not for the life of me figure out where this buck summered. So I decided to contact a couple neighbors and see if I could get permission to hang at least a couple trail cameras to see if I could find the deer. Well, I didn't find OMAG, but what I did find was a very unique buck. He had a brow tine that was much taller than the other. Therefore, my wife and I, we coined the buck Uno. Now, we believed at that time the buck was either two or three years old. We're not 100% certain. So therefore, the buck was not on our target list whatsoever for the 2014 season. OMAG was the primary target, which I later caught up to on November 1st. Throughout the remainder of the 2014 season, I did see Uno a handful of times. I did see him in my real world soybeans and the real world harvest salad on several occasions and really good trail camera pictures of him as well. Then come late season, sure enough, he was there. He was there with the buck that I was going to be chasing the following year in 2015, the buck I coined Rapper Son. Now fast forward to the 2015 summer months, I was after the buck I called Rapper Son. This was a five and a half year old buck that was my primary target for 2015. The only problem is, is this buck summered complete opposite directions from where Uno did the summer before. Therefore, I did not put a single trail camera over there where Uno summered in 2014. Now with season rolling around, it didn't take long, and sure enough, there was Uno. I could not believe it. He blew up. He was now a mainframe mate with one brow still taller than the other, but both brows were now split. After looking at the trail camera pictures, I was convinced this buck was probably a four and a half year old buck. On November 5th, it was my one and only encounter with Uno. He was dogging a few does and came by me at a mere 30 yards and I elected to pass. Just a few days short later, I was able to shoot the buck that I called Rapper Son and fulfill that quest. But I was certain Uno was going to be at the top of my list for 2016. As the summer of 2016 rolled around, I put the trail cameras back in the core area where I had pictures of Uno in 2014. And just like that, there he was. He was all over the trail camera. I mean, just incredible trail camera pictures. And I actually got to see him from the road one time. But the main thing is with this buck now is he just put on so many more inches. And now his name almost seems completely irrelevant because now he doesn't have just one brow that's tall. Both brow tines are extremely tall, and he put a big split on one of his brows. So this buck was definitely at the top of my target list for 2016, along with another buck that I coined, Kick It In Sun. Those were the two primary target bucks for 2016. Throughout the 2016 season, I had quite a few trail camera pictures of Uno, and only just a handful of daylight pictures of him. And on January 8th, I was able to shoot the other buck that I mentioned earlier, Kick It In Sun and fulfilled that journey but one thing i started noticing in 2016 is this buck started moving away from our property more and more and i started getting less and less pictures of this buck so i knew i had my hands full this brings us to the summer of 2017 and i'll be honest my heart skipped a beat when i got that first trail camera picture i could not believe how big this deer was now he is a mainframe 10 with a giant split brow, both brows super tall once again. This deer was absolutely world class. Unfortunately, he hung up at about 55 yards and the doe took him straight out into the wide open middle of the food plot, which really blew my mind. Uno did not like being out in that food plot in the wide open during daylight, hardly ever. After this encounter though, I was super optimistic. I thought for sure in the next coming days I would get a crack at Uno. Unfortunately, I had to go back to work, plus dealing with the house stuff and everything, so it wouldn't be until around after first shotgun season, which is November 17th in 2017, that I'd be able to get back after him. Well, little did I know, God had different plans for me that day. After leaving deer camp, my wife had some cramps. Long story short, she went into labor. We had to fly NASCAR to the hospital and deliver our first child, who came two months and ten days premature. So obviously this put a dagger in the rest of my hunting season, 
which I was perfectly fine with because my daughter was still healthy and not sick and everything was good and we were able to bring her home after two months. To be honest, I don't know if I can list all the preparations I made in 2018 before the 2018 hunting season. I literally worked my tail off to hopefully get an opportunity at UNO that year from hanging new tree stands, trimming lanes, to moving tree stands, hanging new tree stands, to planting the food plots, different type of food plots, new food plots, planting corn for the first time in years, and just trying everything I possibly could to hopefully entice this buck to want to stay on our property a little bit longer than what he had been in the past. Uno showed up right on cue, and believe it or not, the, during the hunting season of 2018, I had a lot more daylight pictures of Uno, and I don't think it was the corn that had much to do with it. It was just the fact of maybe the deer was getting older and was shrinking its core area, so it was making it more visible on our property. And it wasn't until November 6th when I had my first encounter. I happened to look over to my right shoulder, and I could see a doe working her way slowly to me at about 60 yards. For whatever reason, this doe was super nervous, super on edge, and I have no idea why, because the wind was right, everything was perfect, but for whatever reason, she was very, very skittish. And I happened to look behind her, and sure enough, there's a Uno. And they were on track for coming directly right to my tree stand, coming right past me, giving me a perfect 20 yard shot if they would have continued on the same path. But for whatever reason, this doe turned around and went back the way she came from, and Uno followed suit and followed her off into the one of the big bedding areas. I saw quite a few deer that morning. It was a great hunt and about nine o'clock in the morning for whatever reason I looked to my left and three does just busted out at 30 yards behind this maple tree which still had leaves. So I, I stood up and readied my position, got the camera turned on and I just so happened to catch the sunlight just right just to see tips of Uno's antlers walking diagonally away from me behind this maple tree. Had that little maple tree not been there that morning, this story probably would have been over that day. So instead of falling right after those does, Uno was actually walking away from me, heading towards the adjacent ridge, and I couldn't figure out why he was doing that until I saw some running. And sure enough, there was four other bucks heading down towards those does, and Uno was trying to chase them off and it ended up just turning into complete chaos, deer running everywhere, circles, and I was frantic, didn't know which way to turn the camera, but it was an awesome morning, awesome encounter, but once again, did not get a shot off on Uno.
2019 summer months rolled around. I put up my trail cameras in the same place that I've always done in the past to get Uno on camera, and he's not there. He's not there. Every year, by the end of July, I had a trail camera picture of Uno. However, in the back of my mind, I knew crops got planted a lot later, and so maybe it was going to take him a little longer to show himself. But then finally, on August 16th, I woke up to get ready to go to work, and sure enough, there he was on my cell phone. My uh, Spartan cell cam picked him up, and I just could not believe how big he was once again. He was now his biggest typical frame he's ever been, and might be his biggest rack he's ever had. I'm not 100% on that, but it's definitely my favorite because I'm a big typical guy. They're just so rare, and I just couldn't get over the fact of how big he truly was. His brow tines, without question, were the tallest in 2019, but there was another buck that was on my target list for 2019 that I haven't mentioned yet, and that buck is a buck I coined Titanic. Now, Titanic in 2018 ran off one of the best four-year-olds I'd seen in a long time. And so lucky for my neighbor, he was able to bag that deer, which really made me have a bone to pick with Titanic. But realistically, this buck was just so big bodied. He didn't have a lot of headgear in 2018. He was just so big bodied, hence the name why I gave him Titanic. And I was honestly afraid that if Titanic and Uno were in the same area, the two would fight. And I believed Titanic would honestly win. He was just a bigger bodied deer and he was a bully. He pushed off all kinds of different bucks. I watched him do it in person, on trail camera, you name it. So in 2019, whatever he had on his head, it didn't matter. I was going after that deer. And I was gonna try to get it done as quick as humanly possible so when Uno did come onto our ground that he would have the free reign and hopefully stick around a little bit longer and give me a shot. Well, believe it or not, Titanic actually blew up on his rack. He Sported a 10 point frame with a split G2 on one side. Just an absolutely beautiful buck. So I was gonna definitely be tickled pink if I could shoot that deer as well. But once again, God had other plans. My wife who was pregnant on October 24th called me while I was in the tree stand, thought she was going into labor. And sure enough, she was. I shimmied down the tree as fast as I possibly could, got to the hospital and we delivered our baby girl, second baby girl and she was a month and a half premature, which is definitely better than two and a half months. So long story short, I got back in the tree stand November 8th. I was able to have my first encounter with Titanic of the year, and I was able to seal the deal, which is on a previous video here on the Team Radical channel. Chasing Uno, obviously, he's my next buck I'm chasing, but I felt like I needed to get this deer out for sure. Um, I'm happy with this deer. This is a great trophy buck for me, um, but I felt like I needed to get him out because he's such a big bully that uh, I think if him and Uno squared off that he would probably win. He's just a, a big old buck. Okay, it's 6.30, November 12th. Last night we got a nice blanket of snow, probably a few inches. The temperature absolutely plummeted last night. It is literally right now probably a zero to negative five feel like temperature. It is actual temp of about probably five to seven degrees right now with a 10 to 15 mile an hour wind out of the northwest. I'm hopeful this morning they'll really move. We had severe wind gusts yesterday, 30 mile an hour. So I think those deer would get on their feet early this morning. They're gonna have to. I mean, they're gonna have to move to stay warm today. Have to. I think I might have to do. It is freaking cold, but so far so good, all set up. Just waiting on Mr. Uno to come by and finish this story. This morning's hunt was incredible. First encounter with Uno, and Jake is with me. He came all the way from Springfield to film this hunt, so we're really optimistic of getting a crack at him. He's with a doe, 
he went into the TSI and in the years past when he does that he'll come back out of the evening with snow on the ground these deer should really be going to the food if that's the case we have a really really good shot of getting a crack at him tonight so fingers are crossed we're gonna head up there and hopefully make this happen in this six-year quest okay we're right by where I was sitting this morning and we're gonna walk across this food plot here I got a screen we're gonna walk on the back side of that screen. Cause I think he's bedded over here in the TSI with that doe, I hope. We're up on the acorn hill. So we're gonna try to slip in here super quiet and undetected and hopefully not get busted. We're taking a chance, but this late in the game, we gotta we gotta play hard. So we're gonna go try to make it happen. set up in the tree stand. We're gonna make this quick because we already got deer moving. A little fawn right here. Phase one is complete. We got into the stand without bumping any deer that we know of. And we should have been able to see her here if we did. So super excited about that. I think this afternoon could be the ticket baby. Let's go. Udo then got behind the lead doe as they were walking right towards us and for whatever reason the wind switched a little bit, swirled and you can tell the doe just caught just a little bit of wind that she did not like. But she did not freak out, did not panic, did not run, snore, any of that. She just stood there for a brief moment and Uno came up right behind her. He started rubbing on a tree and started walking from our right to our left. And I ranged that doe and she was standing at 55 yards. And I know I can make that shot all day long in my backyard at a target, but on a whitetail, on a deer, not knowing what their reaction is gonna be from the time that you pull the trigger to the time the arrow gets there, I just did not feel comfortable taking a shot that far. And then the doe decides to turn and go straight back away from us where they came from. Uno followed suit perfectly and they ran off in the distance and we watched them for a long time as, as they ran off.
ね。Pack up in the stand to pack up the stuff. I just stalked up to him, got within 40 yards, and he was tore up bad. I could tell he was hurting real bad. He kept drooping his head, picking it back up, drooping his head. He was hurt. I'm like, you know what? If you can get close enough, put another arrow in him, do it. It's exactly what I did. I think I hit somewhere about mid body on him. I'm not real certain, to be honest. I kind of had to go up and over some crap to shoot. And I had to make it kind of quick where I was at. I was in the wide open. But uh, I stuck him again. He ran up the ridge about 70 yards, if that. And he stopped. And his tail just started flickering 100 mile an hour. So, in the past, what that meant when I had that happen on any deer I've ever shot they've died right after that so my fingers are crossed and just for precaution I called Ron Slifer with his dog just in case we do have to track him a little bit but after going back to where I shot him in his bed I stuck the arrow there to mark off the location he actually had two different beds there he got up stood up walked 10 feet and had to bed down again so that tells me he was really hurt so we're giving him at least four to five hours before we start to track. I think he's gonna be dead though. Please God, please God. That is the biggest deer of my entire life. Holy crap. Well, I'm back home now. And uh, now a long wait. Changed the clothes and waiting a while and then I got Ron Slifer and Dio coming to uh, pick up this trail. I did watch him when he, after I shot him that second time, he ran up on that next ridge and I could see his tail flickering really hard. And I think he might've went down there. I'm not a hundred percent, but I lost him in my binoculars as I tried moving a little bit further over to get a better vantage point on him. And hang on just a second. And I'm just praying that he is dead right there. I don't know yet, but man, I hope he is laying there. I hope, hope, hope he is laying there. I've got Chris and Jake on the way. They are going to help me uh, video the recovery. Jennifer is going to go with me and everything. So now it's just going to be a long, about five hour wait until they get here and, and uh, we can see if we got this buck or not because six years of history with this deer four years of chasing him please god please god let me find this deer all right well we're gonna go start the track we just talked about a few things real quick here but one we're not gonna make any sudden noise if we do see him laying there 
and that's that's a great call. We had that happen last night. I thought the yeah. deer was dead. We come up to it, and I yelled out, and he jumped up and ran off from us. So, good call on that. Yep, because we want to make sure he's down for the count for sure, and then. Uh, Hopefully he's laying where last saw him. I, I lost him in my binos because I tried moving to get a better angle. And I'm just praying that's where he went down because I should have been able to see him walk off or run off if he did. And I really don't think he did. Um, I was able to get two arrows in him. Um, so hopefully he should be dead. And like I said, I know a lot of people get criticized, give me crap about bringing the dog to detract us, but this deer deserves it. And if there's any question whatsoever, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Um, Just basically an insurance policy. Yeah, we're here for ranch. I've been with Ron Track on multiple deer before, and Dio does a great job. His nose is way better than our eyes, so we're gonna trust him and follow the lead, and hopefully he's dead. We're gonna follow the frozen lead today. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's leash him up and say a prayer. Let's do, do it. Think? We'll do that. This segment has been brought to you by Lone Wolf Tree Stands, your silent partner. Thank you, Lord, once again. We acknowledge it's all through you, Lord. The wilderness and the white tail we get to pursue, Lord. Once again, Lord, today, I ask that you give us the strength and endurance to keep up with you, as well as keep our senses keen and sharp. And Lord, I also ask that you keep us safe throughout this track and get us home safely as well. I see your name, grace and mercy, I ask this, Lord. Amen. Amen. He's dead. He's dead. Oh. Hey, man. Oh. I got him. I got him. My heart's beating out of my chest. I know yours has got to be. Just the uncertainty of things, man. There was just specks of blood through there, wasn't there? Just little bitty drops. Man. Six years of waiting for that freaking deer. Six. Oh my god. So much hard work, grief. My wife being awesome. My family. Most importantly, God. I don't know what to say. I'm truly thankful. That's the biggest deer I've ever seen in in, in person. Yeah, just wait till you lay your hands on him. I know. I'm ready to get up there and put this arrow away. You guys ready to go up there and look yeah, at him? I'm ready. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm so happy. Come on, Jen. You're coming with me. You're up. Oh, hey. Freaking new now. Come here. Come here and get your hands on him. Oh my god. Oh my god. That is so huge. Oh, I'm so thankful. God. Oh, me too. I've been so nervous. That's the second shot right there. I got a lot more penetration, I thought. 
Oh my God, what? I really don't even know where oh to start. Oh my God. I don't even know <laughs> where to start to be honest with you. This is the biggest deer I've ever seen in person. Kick it in was, used to be. I think this, I, I don't know, I don't even know what to say, but unbelievable. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Six years of following this deer and been hunting him for the last four. And I've been so close, but yet so far all the time. Always something, something going wrong. Last year I had two encounters with him. Last night, Jake with me. Um, we had an encounter with him. He was 52 yards. I did not take that shot. I know I can make that shot pretty much all day of the week. The problem is you don't know what the deer is going to do when you pull the trigger. And this deer, and any deer for that matter, deserves the most eth ethical shot you can. And that's what I took this morning at 20 yards. This deer has been literally a ghost. And we just did it. And I want to thank Jake, Chris, most importantly my wife, God, and, and your parents, and my parents, my grandpa, this is his ground, and allowed me to do what I do here. And uh, I'm officially gonna be tagged out. I'm gonna put a tag on him here in a second. This is the biggest deer I've ever shot, bar none. I mean, I've never seen brow tines like that in my life. Have you guys? I mean, what do you think, Ron? <laughs> I haven't. That's we brought Dio in here just for in case. And I'm glad we did. He took us right up on the trail and just looked over as he was trailing and could see Uno you know, laying here dead. This deer is seven and a half at the minimum, if not eight and a half years old. And if this isn't his biggest rack, it's really close to it. Um, I think this is his prettiest rack. It's just a perfect 10 point. Uh, he's got a little kicker there. And I don't think he's doing that. He's got, he's got tree bark on the back of his antlers. <laughs> just an absolute monster. Unbelievable. So Kyle, kudos to you, man, for not taking that shot last night and also just waiting on this deer. You know, so many guys I deal with don't do that. They get down an hour and a half, hour after the shot. You thought you smoked him, but you still waited just to be safe because yeah. you don't know. Once they go out of your sight, you don't know. Yeah. And dead is dead. He's here. Yeah. You did it. I appreciate it, Ron. Like I said, uh, the first shot I thought maybe was forward, and it definitely was, but I honestly believe the first shot killed him. Uh, he was pretty tore up. I could see when he was laying in his bed, and he was getting pretty sick. And... Uh, I decided to get down and try to get another arrow in him quick, and I did. And that part's not on video because I was by myself and got to 40 yards and shot him again. And that's that arrow and it angled up in there, and I think I got vitals again there. But uh, can't say enough too about shooting a heavier arrow with a fixed blade there, because honestly, if that was a mechanical, there's no way I would have got the penetration I did on the first shot, especially. So. I'm glad I was shooting that Striker V2. It flies true. It did a great job. But, oh my gosh. It's finally over. Hallelujah. Can I touch him? Finally <laughs> over. Have at it, boys. Have at it, boys. That's awesome. Oh my God. Man, that is... What do you guys say? That those... That's right. You, you call those brow times sexy or something, right? <laughs> All right, deer has not moved. Deer is officially tagged. Oh my God, and I've never done one before, but this deer, it's kind of pretty exciting because uh, we're gonna full body mount him. And we're gonna eat the meat obviously, but we're gonna full body mount this deer. Don't know where we're putting that at yet, but said if we shot him, Maybe. we're gonna full body yeah. mount him. Well. Jake and I are gonna hold him to it. We yep. got it. We got him. You say that like three years we ago. We gotta try to figure out how we're gonna get this Rapper. side by side in here. We'll get it in. I'll get it in here. Holy moly. What a giant. I remember our first baby being in the NICU and Kyle coming up and visiting, not going hunting and telling her about this deer every single day. 
Kenzie would smile every time I'd talk about him. Like, that's got to be a sign. Now she'll be on And pictures. now we got our second baby girl who came premature too. And we also talked about Uno. In the NICU. In the NICU. Get on yep. the back, back side, Tom. Yep. We'll, we'll go back here. Up. Hey, give everybody. Give everybody. You gotta hold them. <laughs> <laughs> and the shit over here. <laughs> hey, you wanted a shotgun. <laughs> yeah, Chris was the only smart one. <laughs> it's they're both front seats. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those front legs. I don't want to drag his neck over here. I don't have to pick up more. Shut that tailgate. Pull his back up a little bit further, Chris. Yeah. Yep, right there. Most importantly, Uno taught me a lot of life lessons. He really did. And most importantly, to keep my priorities straight. And the guilt that you may feel in the tree stand, whether you're leaving your family to go hunt or your girlfriend or your boyfriend, no matter whatever you are, we all have our life struggles. We all have other commitments. And I found through this whole journey that an amazing support team truly was the key in this entire story. That was the turn lock key of everything. Because without that support system, without the home front, this story would have never happened. This video would have never been made. That opportunity would have never presented itself to me. So I'm super thankful. My wife my, is my biggest fan. God bless her. I'll never forget that phone call. And she was bawling on the phone. So happy. She's been an absolute rock star throughout this whole entire thing. Her mom, Jane, has just been an angel, allowing me to hunt. And, and helping me take care of Kenzie with the whole situation that's happened here in 2019 with our newest daughter. And just my the rest of my family, my friends, the Team Radical family, Chris and Jake for coming on the recovery. Everybody always encouraged me. They always did. They, they weren't down on me. They encouraged me and gave me that motivation because honestly, 99% of this is a mental game. You've got to grind it out. How bad do you want it? How bad will you push yourself? How far will you go? And that's exactly what I had to do. And I felt like I hit my limit many, many times upon this journey. But at the end of the day, but at the end of the day, I was finally able to seal the deal and make it happen. I'm super thankful and humble. Thank God, most importantly. And Uno, I'd just like to say thank you, but checkmate. When it comes to food plots, we're really looking for three different things. Attractiveness, longevity, and herd health. The Real World Gen 2 soybeans have four different varieties in this bag. They are the most shatter resistant soybeans on the market, which means these soybeans are going to last you all the way through season and a lot of times as well after. They also have a higher oil content, which is going to make them a lot more attractive than most of your other soybeans out there. Having four different varieties of soybeans in this bag, we're going to have four different maturity rates. The soybeans are packed full of protein, which is going to help our herd health and they're going to last all the way through season, all the way after season, especially in those harsher conditions, and definitely provide not only for the deer, but all wildlife. They also offer a northern blend of soybeans for you guys that are in the northern states. And there's three different varieties of soybeans, and those also the most shatter resistant soybeans on the market. If you want to learn more on the Real World Gen 2 soybeans or the northern blend soybeans, check out their website at realworldwildlifeproducts.com or find the dealer nearest you.